Stanford University. Okay, well, welcome to lecture number nine of CS193P. This is spring of 2016. Today, we're going to talk all about table view. That's the only topic for today. It's basically a way to create uh, apps that are looking at large data sets. And our demo is going to be a Twitter client. And of course, Twitter is this humongous data set, bunch of tweets out there and more all the time. And so table view is a great way to, to uh, show tweets. So what is table view? UI table view is a subclass of UI view. Okay? Uh, it displays data in a big table. Okay? And there's really two different looks to it. All right? There's the plain style, which you see here on the left. Uh, which is basically just all of the things it's showing in a big, long, straight list. And then there's group style on the right, which is also a bunch of rows of data, but grouped a little more obviously uh, into uh, little groups. And these uh, ones on the right okay, are usually more for static tables, okay, where the, the stuff that's in there is fixed. It's kind of fixed in your storyboard, usually even. Whereas on the left is more for data that's changing, ever changing, coming out. Like even here, if you know anything about the NFL, you'll know that this list has changed dramatically since I made this uh, little list. So uh, dynamic data on the left, basically, and more static data on the right. It's not exclusively that, but that's generally how we use these two different styles, OK? Now let's talk about all the parts of a UI table view so we know the terminology. All right, I'm going to show this to you in plain style, but then I'll show you the group style version of it afterwards. So there's a table header at the top. This is just a UI view. It can be any UI view you want. In our demo, we're going to have one of these. It's going to be a UI text field. Okay, but it can be, it can be your own custom view with sub views in there. It can be absolutely anything. And it always lists, lives at the top of the header. And as the table scrolls around, it'll scroll off the top, right? It's at the very top of this thing you're scrolling on. And similarly, there's a footer, also some UI view. Notice at the bottom, I'm showing you a little bit of code, like var, table view, footer, UI view. That's basically telling you, telling you the function or the property where you set this thing. Okay, these would be functions or properties in UI table view. Okay? Uh, next is a bunch of stuff that we group together and we call it a section. Okay? So the data that's in the table can be sectioned off into little uh, pieces. And you'll see in the next slide a little more of an example of that. But each section okay, has a header. This is usually a string, but it could also be a UI view if you wanted a complicated looking header, maybe with images or something like that. But usually this is just a string and also a section footer. Okay, so that's every section has a header and footer, header and footer, header and footer. Okay, and then inside the sections, there's the rows. Now these rows, like row zero, row one, uh, these two sections each have two rows, but there can be any number of rows, and it doesn't have to be the same number of rows in every section. One section might have zero rows or five rows, and another one might have 100 rows, OK? Um, this row is basically represented in the table by a UI view. It's actually a subclass of UI view called UI table view cell. And this method right here is going to get called in your code, cell for row and index path, and it returns one of these UI table view cells. OK, this is probably the most important method in implementing a table view is this cell for row and index path. We'll be coming back to this again and again. Okay? So those are all the names of the parts of a table view. So when I was talking about it, you know what they are. So this is what it looks in plain style. Here's the exact same thing in group style. Okay? So it has the same thing, headers, cells, footers. It's just that it displays them a little bit differently. Okay? All right. Sections or not. What does it look like to have sections or not? Now, this is visible section. So look here on the right. You see I have some uh, cities in Japan, for example. And this little gray bar right there, I don't know how well you can see that, actually. But there's a gray bar there that says Japan. That's a section header. Okay. So there's one section, the Japan section. It's got three rows. Here's the Mexico section. It's got uh, three rows. Here's Italy section. It's got at least two rows there at the top. Okay. This one over here doesn't have any sections. Now, it actually might have sections, but no section headers. Okay? If you have sections, but no section headers, it looks like you have no sections. Um, but but uh, this is what we mean by section. So just groups of things in the table. Um, the type of cell, okay, those little rows, uh, there are five types of cell. Here are four of them that are built into the system. 
Uh, the subtitle has a piece of text and then a small little piece under it, okay? This is called the title and the subtitle or the text and the detail text sometimes we call it. The basic one, the second one, has no detail text, only has the primary text. Uh, the right and left are similar to the subtitle, but it puts the text in a little different place with a little different color, okay? So you can see that the basic cell types that come with the system, pretty limited, okay? They also can display an image, turns out, but uh, they're pretty limited. There's a fifth type, which is custom cell, which lets you build any UI you want inside the cell. You can drag buttons, text fields, images, anything you want in there, and we're going to talk about <laughs> and demo that today. All right. So how do I use a table view in my application? And the answer is 99% of the time you're going to use a table view controller, okay? Table view controller, it's a UI view controller, a subclass of UI view controller. That subclass is called UI table view controller. And just like when you use a UI view controller, you subclass it to make a class you can hook your outlets and actions up to, same thing here. You're going to subclass UI table view controller so you can wire up things uh, if you want, inside your controller, okay? Now, it is possible to use a UI table view without the UI table view controller, but like I say, we almost never do. 99% of the time, uh, we're going to use UI view controller, okay? And so, if you drag a UI view controller out into your storyboard, UI table view controller, sorry, if you drag a UI table view controller out, you're going to get this thing right here. That's going to be a UI table view controller. And the view, remember the view property in a UI view controller is that top level view. It's going to be of type UI table view. Okay, the very top, top level is a table view. So this uh, UI table view controller, the entire view is just one big table view. Now it is possible to drag out your own UI view controller and make the table view only be a part of the view, like be a sub view of the main view. But again, very rare to do that. Not even really going to talk about doing that, but you, you could. Requires a little more work on your part. This is kind of a nice prepackaged way to use table view here. Okay? Um, of course, when you subclass UI table view controller up here, uh, you know, you create your own class, we'll call it my table view controller or something like that, you're going to want to remember to go to the identity inspector and set that as the type, just like you would any other UI view controller. If you right click on it, if you right click on the thing that represents the table view controller, you'll see that, look, here's view, it's hooked up to a UI table view. And then down farther, you see data source and delegate. Those are dele both delegates, okay, for delegation. They are protocol-based communication outlets, communication portals uh, from the table view to the table view controller. And you can see, look, they're automatically hooked up for you. And what that means is that your UI table view controller subclass just has to implement any and all of the data source and delegate methods that it wants, okay, to make things work. Just like we do with scroll view, right? We set ourselves as a scroll view delegate, we implemented that view for zooming in scroll view, now we could zoom. Same thing with table view, except for we're automatically hooked up as the delegate and data source. We'll talk about these, the difference between these two. And there's just a bunch of methods in there, like self row and index path, for us to implement the table, all right? Uh, you can, of course, click on this table and inspect it in the inspector, just like anything else there. Uh, you can see things like a plain style and stuff. I'll show you some of that. Uh, remember when you have a table view, you're going to remember, want to remember control shift click. If you remember control shift click, it lets you kind of click, pick what's under the mouse if, mouse if there are multiple things under there. Okay? That's really valuable here because you've got the cell. Under that, you've got the table view. Under that, you've got the controller. And if you had a custom cell, you might have buttons and text fields in here. So kind of drilling down to which of those things you want to choose, control, shift, click. OK, you want that. Um, so here I'm going to uh, switch the table view from being plain style to being grouped. OK, you can see that uh, when I switch to grouped, it changes a little bit, looks a little bit different. OK, another thing I could switch is dynamic and static. Okay, now grouped and plain, I told you that plain was usually dynamic data and grouped is static. They don't have to be that way. Okay, you choose the dynamic versus static with this other uh, pop-up right here. But again, usually if it's grouped, you're going to pick static from this one. And if it's plain, you're going to be picking dynamic. So I'm going to switch to static right here. When I switch to static, all of this, these little rows in here, now they become fully editable. You can drag buttons out. You can drag text fields, whatever. And whatever you put in your storyboard, that's what's going to appear in your app. 
Okay, however many rows there are here, that's how many rows are gonna be in the app. Whatever buttons and stuff you put in here, that's how many are gonna be in the app. You can wire up outlets in these static ones directly to your controller, just like if this were a view and you dragged a button out to it, okay? So think of static as really just normal view, but grouped, okay? Grouped in these little sections. Really great for things like settings, like you know, the settings app in iOS is just a big table view, a static grouped table view. So it's really great for that. Um, it's not good at all for dynamic data. You're, it doesn't, uh, grouped is not really good for that. And if you have this set to static uh, content, then you can't even do dynamic data. Okay, so static, you edit it all in the storyboard. Very different from dynamic. Okay, so let's go back to talk about dynamic though, because that's really the more interesting one here. Okay, we're also gonna switch back to plain style for dynamic. Now, these rows are prototypes or templates, okay, because I got three rows here, but I'm gonna have hundreds of rows in my app when I load my data up. So these are just the different templates, and you can have different kinds of templates. Like in your homework, you're gonna have two different kinds of rows in one of your table views. One shows image, one showing text. So you're gonna have one prototype for images, and you have another prototype for text, okay? And these prototypes are copied hundreds of times, or however many times is necessary, for all the data. Now, it doesn't actually copy it hundreds of times because it's really smart. It reuses them, so it only uses them for visible cells. Okay, table view is very efficient. As you can imagine, if you had 100,000 items in there and you were making 100,000 UI table view cells, it would be pretty inefficient, so it doesn't do that. It reuses them. But these prototypes are templates that get, you know, essentially copied. Um, so the cells can be inspected just like the table view. So here I'm gonna change, I'm gonna pick this first cell, this first prototype, and I'm gonna change it to be subtitle. And you can see it looks like this in the storyboard just to remind you that it's subtitle. Of course, this is not gonna say subtitle and title when I launch, it's gonna be replaced by the data that I load into that cell, okay? Because I'm gonna have hundreds of these rows, all right? Um, you can also set a little uh, thing to appear on the right-hand side of a row. For example, I picked a detail disclosure which is this little uh, greater than sign, and then this little round uh, circled I. Um, this little gray, uh, greater than sign means that if I press on this row, it's gonna segue, okay? So anytime you set up a segue from a row, which we're gonna talk about, you're always gonna wanna have your accessory be either detailed disclosure or just disclosure. Detailed disclosure means you have this little blue I, and I'll talk about what that means in a second. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that off for now. Um, all right, so uh, another style that you can choose is the custom style. So I'm switch my style here to custom, okay? Now, this custom area, I can resize it, okay? Make it bigger. Uh, I can go over to my object palette down here. I can pick up a label or a button or something. I can drag it out. I can use the blue lines. I can use stack views. I can control drag to the edges. I can build whatever UI I want in here. And remember, it's a prototype. So every row that's gonna use this prototype is gonna have all those labels and buttons in each row, okay? So there's a, when you have this kind of mechanism, you might well ask yourself, well, how am I gonna hook up to that label? How am I gonna control drag? I can't really control drag an outlet to my table view controller because my table view controller is just one controller and I've got hundreds of rows. So which row is the outlet hooked to? So you can't hook your outlets up to dynamic prototype like rows like this. You have to hook it up to outlets in a subclass UI table view cell, okay? So we're gonna create a custom subclass of UI table view cell and it's gonna have outlets in it and we're gonna wire this to it. And we know that for all the visible cells anyway, there's another UI table view cell that's hooked up. So I'm gonna have all these UI table view cells that are gonna all each have outlets to whatever is showing in their custom cell, okay? So you do this with the identity inspector in the same way. So you're gonna do new file, right? You're gonna go over to new file. And when you do new file, you're gonna say table view cell as the super view class. And then you're gonna go up here to the identity inspector with this selected, with this uh, cell selected, and say that it's a my table view cell. And the reason you're gonna do that subclass is so that you can have outlets and stuff. Just like the same reason you do it for a controller, but this is not a controller. This is a UI view subclass, actually. A UI table view cell is a UI view subclass. All right, so now once you have that, you can wire up all the outlets and actions you want.
Okay, and we're going to do this in the demo and make maybe a lot more sense. So here's an example. I'm creating an outlet to this label in my UI table view cell subclass. You see that? Okay. All right. And again, remember it's a prototype. It's going to be duplicated. All your label, this label, and all this stuff, and uh, it's going to be a different instance of this for every row. Okay. All right. So let's talk about those protocols that we're talking about: data source and delegate. Okay. There's two of them because the delegate is controls how the table is displayed. Okay. The data source controls what data is in the table. Okay. What's in the rows. Okay. So that's the difference between the two delegates. Now, the UI table view controller automatically sets itself as the delegate and as the data source. So it's all preset up. And as I told you, the view, the top level view, is a UI table view. There's also a var called table view, which is a computed var that just returns the view. Okay? So that usually will access the table view because it's typed to be UI table view. That's how we access our table view inside of our table view controller subclass code. Right? All right, so when do we need to implement the data source? Only if we're doing dynamic cells. If we're doing static, like you know, the settings example, the group settings thing, then you just do it in your storyboard. You don't need to do anything in the data source protocol to make that work. Okay? Um, but if you're doing dynamic, you need to do it. And there are three very important methods in the data source protocol. There's a bunch of methods in there, but there's three really important ones. One is how many sections are in this table? How many rows are in each of the sections? It's going to ask for every section, how many rows in this section, how many rows in this section, how many rows in this section. And then give me a view, a UI table view cell subclass, to draw this row. Okay? And that's when you're going to implement cell for row and index path and give it your subclass, an instance of your subclass. And I'm going to show exactly how you do that in a second here. So we're going to skip the two easy ones, the number of sections and rows, and go straight to cell for row and index path. Okay? So this method looks like this. Okay? I already talked about the fact that it's reusing here. Um, and the method is called self row at index path. You can see that it returns a UI table view cell right here. This index path is really just the section and, ro and row, section and the row in that section. Okay? They could have called this self row at section in row, two separate arguments, but they decided to call it self row at index path, and they just made a thing called NS index path that's got the section and row in it. Okay? And in fact, if you wanted to like, get your data, you would just say, let the data equal my internal data structure, whatever that is. Index path subsection, index path dot row. Let's say your internal data structure were an array of arrays where the sections were in there and the rows. You could just do this. So this is how you get the section. And this is how you get the row. Okay. So then you have to take the data that corresponds to that section and row, and you have to load it up into a UI table view cell. Okay. So let's talk about how that works. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to move this code on top of the storyboard so that we can see the storyboard at the same time we're looking at the code. Okay? So here's how you get the cell. Okay? You call this table view method. Okay, this is the table view here that's passed along, table view, first argument. DQ reusable cell with identifier. That's the thing that is reusing these cells. Okay? As things go off screen, they get put back into this reuse queue, and when people call this, they get pulled out. Okay? If there's not one available in the reuse queue, it makes one. It copies your prototype to make one. Okay? This says which prototype to use. Each of these prototypes can have a different identifier. You just select the row and go into your storyboard, okay? and you set the identifier. Just like when you do with a segue, right? In a segue, you set the identifier. Same thing here. You're just saying what the name of this is so that in your code, you can DQ the kind of one you want. So if you have multiple prototypes, you'll DQ the right one here. And maybe some sections use one kind of thing and some sections use a different. That's probably going to be in your homework, right? You're going to have a section that's using one of the prototypes and a different section uses a different one. Okay, perfectly fine. Uh, so after you get the cell, which I call DQ'd here uh, by referencing that, you are going to load this cell up with the data from your internal data structure. See, data is this data right here. Okay? And I'm just going to put this uh, in this title and subtitle. Now, you have to go look at the documentation for UI table view cell. Uh, this is not a custom cell, right? This is of type subtitle. So it's just a built in one. It only has these two things. If you look at the documentation for UI table view cell, you'll see that it has a property called text label 
which corresponds to that title thing, and detail text label, which corresponds to this little text label. Okay? So you can set the text of those things here to whatever information, important information or less important information from your uh, data, internal data structure. Then you just return the cell, and that's it. Okay, so you dequeue the cell, load it up with the information at that section and row in your data structure, and return it. Any questions about that? Okay, now let's talk about the custom case. Let's say you have a custom cell, okay? So now my type here is custom. I've got this label, but I could have all kinds of buttons and stuff in here. In this case, you do the same thing, DQ reusable cell, okay, probably has a different uh, identifier here, okay? Then, instead of doing that text label dot text equals, detail text label dot whatever equals, you just call some public API in your subclass of table view cell that passes the information to it. Then it's gonna take that and put it in all of its outlets, okay? Make sense? So it's very, very simple. Notice that I'm having to take the cell, which gets dequeued as a UI table view cell, and I'm having to cast it here to be my table view cell, so I can call this public function in my table view cell. See? Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to call it, because dequeued would be a UI table view cell, not a subclass of it. Already got that? Okay. The UI table view data source, that cell for row and index pass is the most important thing in it. The other two here, number of sections in table view and table view's number of rows in section are the other two. Um, the number of sections by default is one. So if you don't implement number of sections in table view at all, you just don't even implement it, uh, it'll be one, okay? But the other one has to be implemented because the table view has to know how many rows there are. Table view cannot survive unless it knows how many rows there are. So you have to implement this number of rows in section right here. And it's simple, it just gives you the section, you return how many rows are in that section. Okay, and it's gonna call that repeatedly, once for every section. Okay, what about in a static table? You don't have to do any of this. Okay, static table, it's fixed in your storyboard. All right, so that's how the table data source works. Um, the section titles, like remember I showed you the section that had Japan and then the Japan things and then Mexico and the Mexico cities? Those titles, like Japan, those are considered part of the data as you might imagine. So there's another table view data source method called table view title for header or footer in section. Okay, you give it the section and you return a string or there's another one that you can return a view, a UI view. Okay, so that's how you set the headers of your tables. Uh, there's a number of other methods in here that have to do with editing and moving rows because when you're deleting rows, you're affecting your data source, right? You're deleting the data out of your data source, so uh, those get involved. I'm not going to talk about those, but this is the kind of thing you'll probably want to do either for the extra credit or in your uh, final project. You're almost certainly going to want to have a table, at least one, where you can delete the rows or move them around or something, or insert rows, etc. Okay? Now, what about segueing from table view cells? How do you do that? exactly as you might imagine. You just control drag from them to the MVC you want to segue to, and when you do, you're gonna get, choose what kind of segue you want, show or show detail, or eventually we'll talk about these other kinds of segues, okay? Uh, if you have that little blue eye, I told you I'd get back to that, here it is, you can control drag from it over, and when you choose your uh, segue, you choose it from this part that says accessory action down here. And when you have a little I here, if you click on the row, it'll do whatever segue is specified by the top selection segue thing. And if you click just on the blue I, you'll get whatever segue is hooked up here. Okay? So you can basically have a row that has two different segues. One if you click on the I, and one if you click on the row. All right, uh, you set your segue identifier as usual, nothing special there. Uh, but the prepare for segue, obviously, is going to be a little different when you're segueing from a row. So let's look at prepare for segue. And the difference is all about who the sender is. Normally, the sender in prepare for segue is like the UI button you clicked on that caused the segue to happen. Well, here, of course, the sender is the UI table view cell you clicked on. Okay? So you're going to have to get that UI table view cell. And since this is any object, you're going to have to convert it to either my table view cell if it's custom or UI table view cell if it's not custom. Then you're gonna call this very important method in table view called index path for cell. Okay, it's gonna give you an NS index path that's basically gonna tell you which row in which section you're segueing from. 
Because if you're preparing, you got to know which row you came from so you know how to prepare the guy you're segueing to. Okay? So then you just take, you get your destination view controller as usual. Okay? This is just, just like in any other prepare for segue. And then you get your data out of your model, okay, in your table view controller in that section and row. Okay? However, you might have to call a function to do that or what, however you do it. And then you just assign that to the public API of the thing you're segueing to, just like you normally would in any prepare for segue. Okay? So the magic is just this little thing, index path for cell. Don't forget about that. Okay? That's how you figure out which row you're segueing from. All right, how about the UI table view delegate? Not the data source, but the delegate. Um, it has a lot of stuff for how the table view works. I'm not going to talk a lot about it, but I'll talk about a couple of interesting ones. Um, uh, usually the data source and the delegate are the same object, namely your controller, your table view controller. Um, the delegate lets you observe what's going on inside the table. Okay, has a lot of will do something, did do something kind of uh, methods in it. It has a very interesting one, which is to let you know when the user selects a row, when the user touches on a row. Now, normally when they touch on a row, you're just going to segue, but sometimes you might want to touch on a row and table and not segue. You want to do something else, okay? And so this gives you kind of table view target action, okay? Uh, the way you do that is you implement this method in your controller, did select row at index path, okay? And the table view will send you this, whenever someone touches on a row. And this is just telling you which row they touched on. Okay? Simple. Um, another interesting one is if they press on that little I, the little circled blue I, you'll get this method, accessory button tapped for row with index path. Okay? So you can find out that the I button was pressed. Again, you might be segueing instead, but you can, do, you can get it notified if you want, uh, alternatively. Lots of other methods. I'm not really have time to talk about them all. Um, so you, providing the UI view for headers and footers is kind of a drawing thing. So um, they do that. Uh, the editing and moving the rows, there's not just a data source element to it. There's actually the visual moving the rows. It gets involved in that, that kind of thing. Okay. Now, what if your model changes in your table view controller, right? the underlying data? Well, you need all those sections and rows to change. Right? You might have a different number of sections, a different number of rows in each section. So you're going to call this method in table view called reload data. And that causes the table view to go back and call all those methods, number of sections in table, number of rows in each section, cell for row at index path for all the visible cells, call them all again okay, to get your table view reset up. Now that might seem kind of heavyweight, and for a large table maybe it would be. So if you know how your model changed such that you know which index paths, which sections and which sections and rows, like maybe only one section uh, would have been changed, then you can try this more fine-tuned reload rows at index paths, which is just like reload data, but only certain index paths. Okay? Um, how about the height of rows? How tall are rows? Rows are a fixed width. They're the entire width of the table. But what about the height? Um, normally, the height is just set in the inspector in your storyboard, and it's fixed. All the rows are exactly the same height. A, rows of a certain prototype, all the rows that matter of a certain prototype, prototype the same height. But it is possible to let the system calculate the proper height and have the rows be different heights. Okay, so it'll use auto layout, right, inside the, your, your custom cell to figure out how high it should be, and then make it that high, and it'll do that for every row. But if you're doing that and you had a thousand rows, <laughs> think about, is really the system's gonna load up a cell for every single one of those 10,000 rows, do the auto layout on each one to figure out how big the table is? No way, that would be horrendously inefficient. So instead, it asks you to tell it an estimated height. And it uses the estimated height just to estimate the total size of the table view, but then as one comes on screen, it makes it to be the actual height based on using the auto layout. And the way you make it do the auto layout is with this height, UI table view automatic dimension. It's a special height, which means calculate it for me using auto layout. Okay? You can also control the height, and you're probably going to do this, hint, hint, you're probably going to do this in your homework assignment. You control the height right here with a method that'll get sent to you. Okay? The table view will send you this message, height for row at index path, and it'll give you the index path, and it's asking you to tell it the height. Okay? And in here, you could calculate the height. So maybe you don't want auto layout to make the decision about the height. You want to calculate it based on something else, okay? Some information that you might have about what's in that cell, okay? 
so you don't want to use auto layout to it, that's fine. You can calculate it here. So you're, it's a big hint. You're going to want to do this in your homework. Okay. All right. So there's in the table view itself, we're talking about its delegate methods. In the table view itself, there are tons and tons of methods. Okay. Can't go over them all. You're going to want to look to them, look for them. Um, but uh, you know things like scrolling around in there, the UI table view actually turns out to be a subclass of UI scroll view. So it inherits all the ability UI scroll view can to scroll around and stuff like that. Um, so you're going to go take a look at UI table view and understand what it can do. But you're controlling the table view mostly by these delegates. Okay, but you can also send messages directly to the table view to make it do things. All right, so that's it on the slides for table view. Assignment four out. Okay, it's basically going to be to do a better version of the demo I'm doing today. So you're going to start with what I have today and you're going to improve it. Okay, it's going to be due in a week, next Monday. Uh, on Wednesday, we're going to start a two day lecture uh, on core data, which is object oriented database. And next week's assignment is going to be enhance what you're building this week to include an object oriented database in there. Okay, obviously we're dealing with big data sets. It would make sense to put it in a database so we can query on it and things like that. On Friday, if there's enough interest, which is still to be determined, watch the bulletin boards in the class to find out, uh, we might have a UI collection view. Now UI collection view is just like table view, except for it's much more flexible. It's not just rows, okay? It can lay things out in almost any arrangement, but it's still the same kind of thing uh, with the number of sections, number of rows, all that. It's just that they're not called rows, they're just number of items, okay? Because they can be laid out in different ways. So now I'm going to do a demo, okay? It's a table view demo. We're going to build a Twitter client, okay? I'm calling it smash tag because hashtags are at the middle of it. And so smash tag is kind of a fun name for it. So let's go here. I'm just going to go to Xcode. We're going to start from scratch. It's a brand new uh, app, okay? It's an iOS application as usual, single view as always. We'll call it smash tag here. Uh, this one's going to be iPhone only. Okay, this app is going to be iPhone only. You, you will only be required to do iPhone as well. Um, you don't have to do, you've already kind of learned your split view doing it on multiple, so you don't have to do that again. So we'll put it in the same place we put everything, home directory developer. Okay, here it is. Um, I'm going to clean up a little bit by going to my storyboard right here. Here's my storyboard, and I'll zoom out so you can see it. It comes with this prepackaged freebie view controller. Uh, I don't even want that, so I'm just going to delete that. Okay, and Ditto the code that came with it too, right here. I'm just going to delete this, get that out of there, move to the trash. Um, we'll go ahead and put all these other things uh, into, not our storyboard, but these things into this little supporting files like we usually do. Supporting, supporting files. Okay, so we're left with really a pretty much a blank app here. Okay, storyboard's got nothing in it. And we're going to have one view controller in this app to start. You're going to add more view controllers in yours. But uh, we're going to start one. And of course, it's going to be a table view controller. So let's drag it out. OK, we're going down here. Go down. So table view controller is like the fourth or fifth one down. I'm just going to drag it out. Uh, as promised, if you do the identity inspector, you can see this view controller is a UI table view controller. And if I click inside on the view that's inside this thing, OK, you'll see that its class is UI table view. Okay, and if I click here on a row, you'll see its class is a UI table view cell. So everyone got the parts here? Have the parts all fit together? All right, well, we obviously need to have our own custom subclass of UI uh, table view controller, okay, just like we did with anything. So let's go ahead and do that right off the bat. File, new file. Okay, it's going to be a Cocoa Touch class. It's going to be a subclass of UI table view controller. I'm going to call it tweet table view controller because it's going to be a table view full of tweets. Okay, so it's a tweet table view controller or a tweet table view controller, whichever you want to look at it there. All right, so we got that. Here it is. We'll put it in the same place as everything else. Okay, here's my tweet table view controller. We'll look at that in a second. Let's go back to our storyboard and make sure we set our custom class. Okay, this is an easy thing to forget. I'm sure a lot of you have. Let's go here, make sure it's a tweet table view controller. So this is a tweet table view controller right here. Let's go look at the code that it generated for us. It's a little more code than we get when we normally make a UI view controller, okay? Because of course we're getting table view uh, specific stuff here. So here's our view did load. It has a couple of comments in here that you can look at uh, when you uh, go build your app. It has to do with selection being cleared and whether there's an edit button for editing uh, this thing. But we're not going to be doing that in this demo, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, we're not going to worry about memory, so we'll get rid of that. Here is our UI 
table view data source right here. Here's the number of section in table. Here's the number of rows and sections. Here's cell for row at index path. Okay, and we know we're going to want that, so I'm even going to uncomment that. Okay, this is the heart of a dynamic table. Okay, so we'll implement that in a little bit. Here's a bunch of other stuff that has to do with editing the table, okay, deleting rows, things like that. You really want to look at this stuff if, again, you're doing extra credit or the final project, you want to make the rows editable, but we'll clear it out of here to make it uh, clean. And then here's our navigation, okay. I'll leave it in here because you're going to be doing navigation, but I'm not doing navigation in my demo. Okay, sense? All right, so that's our tweet controller. So um, we, anytime we have a new view controller, we probably want to think about what our model is, right? It's a really good start for any time you're building a view controller. What's its model? And so this is a table that contains tweets, right? So could say our model probably looks something like an array of tweet or something like that. Okay, where this is a class yet to be determined. I'm actually going to make, and I could even say, you know, equals an array of tweet to make an empty array of them to start off. But I'm actually going to do a little bit trickier. I'm actually going to have this be an array of an array of tweets. Okay, and the reason I'm going to do this is because I'm going to go fetch a bunch of tweets and put it in one section in my table, and then later I'm going to let the user fetch more tweets, and I'll put that in another section. Okay, and I'm going to add the other section by just adding another array of tweets. So this array of array of tweets, each array inside is just a fetch. Okay, so that's why I'm doing an array of an array of tweets. So I can just keep adding sections. Okay, so this is really nice. Having an array of array of something is really nice for table views because it really makes it easy to implement all the t table view methods because it's really clear the section is the outer part of the array and then the row is in the inner part. Okay, are we cool, clear why I'm doing that? Now, of course, if anyone sets my model, I'm going to need to reload my table, which I do with table view reload data. Okay, that's going to call all these methods down here to get called again. Okay, make sense? Now, my model's actually going to be a little more than that. I'm going to have another part of my model, which is search text, which is going to be a string. Okay, I'm going to allow people to set this part of my model, and I'm going to go search for those tweets, tweets that match that search text, and load up the other part of my model with it. Okay, so it's kind of part of my model as well, even though they're, they're related in that way, um, they're both part of the model. Now in this one, if someone sets this one, okay, I'm going to remove all the tweets I got, okay, using the remove all method in array, just wipe out all my tweets that I have, and then I'm going to call search for tweets or something like that, that's going to actually have to go do a search. By the way, I'm also going to set my title to whatever that search text is. So that the if I'm in a navigation controller or something, the title up there will be whatever the search text was. So I need the search for tweets here. So we'll do private uh, func search for tweets, and we're going to have to implement that. Okay, so that's my model. All right, and uh, I could also hear my view load. Maybe I would even say something like search text equals I don't know hashtag Stanford or something. Just I'll in view to load just for testing purposes. I'll just have an initial thing that I'm going to search for. Okay, and when I set this, it's going to call this. It's going to remove all the tweets. It's going to search for new tweets. Okay, eventually this thing's going to find the tweets and call this. That's going to reload the data. That's going to call these. Okay, these are going to load up the table and start making cells to uh, put the tweets. Okay, you understand that flow? All right, let's talk about tweet, this class tweet right here. I just typed that. What is that? Okay, well, I could make you go and learn how to query Twitter and get tweets down and all that, but I really want you to learn about table views here. So I'm going to provide a framework for you that will do that. We'll go out and you give it a search text, it'll search text of some sort, it will just go do the tweets and give it back to you as an array of these tweet objects. Okay? Now, I'm going to give that to you as a framework. Now, we haven't really talked about frameworks too much. The only time I ever mentioned frameworks actually was when I talked about public and private. Remember that? I said there's private, there's public, and there's nothing. And nothing means kind of public within your app. Right? And 
the word public, which we never use, that means public outside of my app or in the case I'm going to do it, outside of my framework. So I've made a framework for you, and it has public methods, methods marked public, okay? Actually public, put on the line there. And that means that you can call those methods, use those classes, outside of the framework, okay? So to make a framework work though, okay, you have to create a higher level project than your project called a workspace that has both the framework and your project in it, okay? So let's do that right away. Let's go over here to Xcode and I'm gonna say new workspace. We have never done this, okay? This is a new kind of project-like thing, but it's really just a collection of other projects. So I hit new workspace. It says, what do you wanna call it? And where do you wanna put it? So I'm gonna put it in my home directory developer here. I'm gonna call it lecture nine. I could call it anything. I could even call it smash tag if I want, but it can be kind of confusing. So I'm gonna call it lecture nine. Okay, and it creates this and look, it looks kind of like an empty project. Like it has no files over here. And what you put over here are other projects. So in a workspace, this is gonna have other projects. And in fact, I'm just gonna go grab my smash tag. Here it is right here. You take the Xcode proj, okay, and you drag it in. Boom, I've added this to my workspace. Now, I can work on my project here just as easily as working at it directly um, by double clicking its Xcode proj. Okay, in fact, better, because when I put this other framework in there, that framework will work here. If I don't uh, work here, then that framework's not gonna be visible, okay? So what about this Twitter framework, where is that? Well, that turns out to be right here, okay? Here's my little Twitter project. This will be available to you, obviously, if you're doing your homework. And I'm just gonna drag its Xcode project in here too. Now, when I do, be very careful not to put it inside the smash tag project. You see how this is trying to put it inside? You want it to be a sibling of smash tag, so put it right up at the top. So the two of them are siblings in this workspace. Whoops, in this workspace right here, okay? See what I'm saying by that? Question. Um, if you make changes to smash tag in your workspace, do they stay? Yeah, so the question is, if I change my framework or my project here in the workspace, do they affect the project? Absolutely. Here you are actually working on those projects in this workspace, but it's those projects you're working on. Okay, putting in the workspace just relates to them. It just gets them in the same grouping. So here's our Twitter project right here. And we still have to say that this smash tag uses this framework. And we do that, right, by clicking on our smash tag project. We need to drag our Twitter framework in here to let smash tag know, yeah, I want you to use Twitter. So what do we, where do we do that? We do it right here where it says uh, products Twitter framework. Okay, this right here. We're just gonna take this guy and pick it up and drag it in here. Now, before I do that, when you download this, you might find this to be red, okay? That means it's not built. So to build it, you're gonna to wanna to go up to the top here. You can see now that in the workspace, I have two choices of things I can build. You're gonna to go to Twitter. Very importantly, you wanna pick generic iOS device because this is a framework and you wanna build it as a generic framework. Okay, for all iOS devices, okay? So do that, and then it'll probably automatically build when you do that, but if not, you can hit play to build, and it'll build Twitter, and then this will stop being red. Okay, very important. If this is red and you drag it in, it's not gonna work. This has to be black, okay? So I'm gonna drag it in, okay, okay to smash tags one. Okay, so here I picked smash tag, drag this down here, it adds it. Notice it shows in smash tag, inside smash tags project, it shows it right there as well. If you're doing Objective-C, by the way, there's some headers right here, because even though I wrote this in Swift, you could use it in Objective-C using these headers right here, okay? If you're in Swift, you don't care about those headers, all right? But now, inside of our code of our smash tag, we can reference that framework by saying import Twitter, which is the name of this fr framework, okay? And once we import Twitter, look, this, in fact, we go back here, show where this, and we're gonna build this one for mm, iPhone 6. If you go back here, you'll see that tweet no longer generates an error and it turns purple because it's recognized. Now, this is the only tweet in our namespace, but the full name of this thing is actually twitter.tweet. Okay, and you can either specify a full name or if there's no other tweets around, you could leave this off. I'll put it in there just so you're reminded, okay, that that's coming from that framework. Got it? 
Now let's go look at this twitter.tweet and see what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna look in my Twitter framework right here. Here's tweet. You can see tweet is really just a collection of information about a tweet. The text in the tweet, the user who tweeted it, when it was created, a unique identifier, uh, images that are attached to it, and hashtags, URLs, and users that are mentioned in the tweet. And your homework is gonna be about showing me these mentions. Okay, I'm not gonna do that in my demo, that's for you to do. Okay, so that's what a tweet is. Then we have user, which is you know, the name, screen name of the user. Media item, this is for attached images. Notice it has the aspect ratio. That'll be very valuable to you as you try to build your uh, table view. Okay, this is just an image that's attached with a tweet. When people tweet, sometimes they attach an image or whatever. And then there's this very important class called request. Okay, twitter.request. And uh, I'm gonna look at the public API of this actually. Let's go over here, look at generated interface. Here it is. You can see that I've marked a lot of these things public. You see, public, public class. Here's all the public API. The things you're gonna, we're gonna use is this public initializer, which gives this, the search string to search on Twitter, and then how many results you want, okay? And then this guy, fetch tweets. And what fetch tweets does is it uses that search string to go fetch tweets, and it calls a little function here, this function, okay, function of this type, that just hands you an array of the tweets when they come back. Now this is asynchronous, okay, obviously. We're gonna go to the network here. So this is coming back, and the thread that this comes back and calls you on is not necessarily the main thread. So we will wanna be sure to dispatch async out of here back to the main thread if we're gonna be doing any UI. Everyone understand that? Okay, so that's it. This is a really easy class to use. Right? We just initialize it with the search we want and then just fetch the tweets. Okay? It's also got this little thing down here which is kind of fun, a request from newer, for newer. If you have a request that was successfully got you some tweets, you can call this request for newer and it'll give you a new request that will request only more new tweets. Tweets you didn't get in the last request. See what I'm saying? Because people are always tweeting all the time. So sometimes you just want the ones that were tweeted since the last time you got it. So we'll use this as well. Okay, in our demo. All right, everyone understand this Twitter thing? Pretty simple to use. All right, yeah. Um, so it looks like it was returning a void. Do you have to typecast that to a tweet array? Uh, uh, the previous one? Down here, uh, it, it returns void, but remember this is a function that takes an array of tweets as the argument. So you're gonna pass a closure here, and that closure is going to take that array and do something with it. Okay, it, does, it can't return the array because it's asynchronous. It has to go off and down, it has to call you back, okay, with this function when it's got the tweets. So that's a good question. All right, back here, uh, we're in our tweets. Let's get to the heart of this, which is this guy, search for tweets. That's the thing that's gonna use the Twitter uh, framework to search for tweets. So how's this thing uh, gonna do what it does, basically, um, to do the, Tweets. Well, I'm going to actually create a little private var, which I'm going to call my Twitter request. Uh, it's going to be of type Twitter request. Okay. And uh, it's going to be computed. And this is just going to be a little way I can kind of have a little var, which is the request I want to make. And uh, I'm going to say if uh, I can let query equal uh, my search text. Okay. That's this thing right here. Okay. Uh, and I also don't want it to be empty, so I'm gonna say where the query is not empty. Okay, there's that where clause again. So here I'm checking to see if it's not nil with if let, and then I'm also making sure it's not empty. So, because I don't want to do a quitter request for empty, that, that, you know, like asking for all tweets, that makes no sense. So there's gotta be at least something to search for. Um, so if that's okay, then I'm just gonna return a request by saying twitter.request. I'm gonna call that initializer that we were talking about, search. Um, we can search for the query as its own, but maybe I want to add some other stuff like I don't want retweets. So <laughs> the, if you can, uh, in the API um, for, doing, for looking for tweets, you can specify things like filter out retweets. I don't want them. So I'm going to do that. And then uh, count. Let's get 100 at a time. So we'll get 100 tweets at a time. Okay? Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to return nil here. Okay? So uh, if... if some, if I want to do a Twitter request, but I don't have any search text, then I'm just going to return nil. I'll know not to actually do any kind of search. Okay? So I understand what that var is. It's just giving me the request that I'm going to do. So let's use that request. I'm just going to say if I can let 
the request equal my Twitter request. So it's going to call that little computed bar up there. OK? Then I'm going to use that request to fetch tweets. OK? So here's fetch tweets. Here's that argument, which is the handler. By the way, really fun way when you're doing closures uh, is to do the escape completion till it shows this in blue, and then double click on it. You see? Because then it'll put the closure out there for you with the right argument type here. Now, I like closing, clo trailing closure syntax, so I'm just going to get rid of my parentheses and put this closure at the end. OK? So that looks kind of cool, right? Fetch tweets. It's going to call this closure. Here's the uh, tweets that it's going to give back, an array of tweets. I'll call this new tweets. OK? And then in this code, I can use the new tweets, add them to my table, basically. It's really easy. But of course, I have to dispatch async, OK? Because this closure is being executed off the main queue when those tweets come back sometime in the future. So I've got to dispatch async. So um, for my queue right here, I'm going to dispatch back to the main queue. So that's dispatch under bar get main queue. And here's my block. Again, I'm going to double click it. Okay. Again, I'm going to use closing, trailing closure <laughs> syntax. Okay. And so this is now dispatch in the main queue. So all I need to do here is just say, if the new tweets are not empty, in other words, I got some back, then I'm just going to insert to my tweets at the beginning uh, these new tweets at index 0. Okay, Because I want the new tweets at the top of my table, so I'm putting it at the beginning of my array. Okay, Make sense? Now, I've got a red error there. Anyone know what that is? It's pointing to right here. Any ideas? Huh? Don't be shy. Self, absolutely. We need self here. That's Swift trying to remind us, hey, this closure, this closure right here is keeping, and actually this one out here too, okay, is keeping this self in the heap. Now, I don't think we want that here. Because what if we make some Twitter request and it takes forever, and meanwhile the user just navigates away from this thing? We want this thing to be able to leave the heap. So we're going to fix this using weak. Weak weak self equals self. So I'm just created a new variable here called weak self. It's weak, so it don't, won't hold anything in the heap. And I'm going to set it equal to self. So it's a weak version of self. And then down here, I'm going to use weak self. Okay, But this is an optional, because it gets set to nil if this thing leaves the heap. So I have to do question mark there, so that this will just not happen if it leaves the heap. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. If those tweets come back and this thing has left the heap, just ignore this. OK, perfect. Now, there's another problem here, multi-threaded problem we got to think about, okay? which is, what if this takes a long time, and by the time it comes back, the user has issued a different tweet request? They type something else in to search for. Okay? You don't want to show them these tweets. They were from some old thing. So just like we did in the image view controller here, we're going to have to have a var. We'll have some private var, which is our last Twitter request. Okay, which is going to be a Twitter dot request. Okay, and uh, we're going to have to keep track of this. Okay, when we go off and do this fetch, right before we do it, I'm going to remember what that last Twitter request was. Okay, which is the request we're doing, and then down here, I'm going to say if the request that we did is the last one that we requested, then we can do this. Otherwise, just ignore these tweets coming back. Okay. This needs weak self in front of it as well. OK? Everyone see that? I really want you to start understanding. This is really going to be important in your homework. OK? Because in your homework, you're going to be doing multi-threaded stuff, and stuff's going to come back. And this is a table view that's going to be scrolling up and down, reusing the cells. It might come back to a cell that's no longer displaying the same row as it was before, because it got reused. OK? So you really got to understand this thing about understanding the world when you come back from an asynchronous request. OK? The, three things, the two things really to understand about asynchrony. One is memory cycles. Make sure you break them when appropriate. And number two is understanding that these things take time. And when they come back, things might not be the same. OK? Those are the two things to make sure you understand when you're doing asynchronous programming. All righty then. We have our, this is all we need to do to build our model, build our data structure up. Okay, this thing is now built up. Okay, this tweets, when we add 
and when we insert more tweets to it, that's going to cause did set to happen because this is a value type. Okay, so did set's going to happen, and boom, reload date's going to happen. So now we got to make sure that when reload data happens down here, that these things all do what they're supposed to, right? So let's talk about number of sections. That one's real easy. Tweets dot count. Okay, because our tweets is an array of arrays. The number of arrays in the top level is how many sections we have. Okay, so that's good. Got that warning out of there. How about this one? This one is tweets subsection dot count. So now we're looking at our array of arrays, finding the array that is this, that is this section, and looking how many rows are in there. Everybody got that? This is really cool to have really simple implementations of these by designing our data structure to make this simple. Hint, hint, hint. I strongly recommend that for your homework as well. Try to design your data structure using all you've learned about Swift. Swift is really awesome at being able to design sophisticated, flexible data structures. You design a data structure, you can have one-liners like this. Okay? Now, you have a different thing going on. Your table is going to have mixed things, different kinds of things. I have all the same kind of thing. All mine are all tweets. You have mixed things, so it's a little more complicated for you. But it still can be done. All right, so now we have to do this self row in index pass. We have to make um, uh, a cell. Well, first thing we want to do is this reuse identifier right here. So I'm actually going to make a private struct called storyboard, just like I did in the last demo. And it's going to have a static let called uh, tweet cell identifier. And we'll call it, we'll just call it tweet. So this is going to be the identifier uh, of the cells in the storyboard. So I'm going to replace this reuse identifier with storyboard.tweet cell identifier. Okay, so that's specifying it. Now I need to do the same thing in my storyboard. Okay, here's my row right here, my prototype row. I'm going to start off by making it be a subtitle row. We'll eventually make it custom, but let's make it be a subtitle row. And I got to make sure my reuse identifier is the same, so I'll make it be tweet. See the two things I did there? So that makes it so that this code matches up with my storyboard. All right. So now here I've dequeued this reusable cell. Might have reused it, might have made one from my prototype in there, which is a subtitle cell. So now I'm just going to get the tweet that corresponds to this index path right here. Again, super simple because of our data structure. Tweets sub index path dot section sub index path dot row. Got it? Okay, because it's an array of arrays, right? So now I just need to load this cell up. So I'll, in its text label, which is that main label of the thing, I'll put the text, which is the tweet's text. Okay, that's the text of the tweet. And then in the detail text label, we'll put uh, the tweet's user's name. Okay? All right, so that's it. Loaded our table up. Should just work fine. Here we go. So when we cross our fingers in the live demo, we didn't forget anything. All right, here we go. It's running. And black. And what do we got down here in the console? Fail to instantiate default view controller main. Perhaps the designated entry point not set? Oh, yeah. Let's go look at that. Main storyboard. Zoom out. Ooh, there's no little arrow going in here. Okay, I'm sure you guys have experienced that as well. So let's go here and just select this um, view controller and say that it is the initial view controller. And now we have this arrow. Okay, excellent. Party on. All right, so here we go. Look at that. It worked perfectly. Okay, here's our, look at that. We can look at all these tweets. Who tweeted them? OK, we're looking at Stanford here. Fantastic. Scrolling up and down. Uh, OK, this is about the ugliest Twitter client I've ever seen. OK? Um, this is, if you put this in the App Store, you'd ridicule would be, would be un, unending for this. Now, how are we going to fix this, though? Really, there's no way none of these standard cells are going to make it look good. We need to build a custom cell, obviously, to make this look good. So it's doing the right thing. It just looks terrible. So instead of using this subtitle cell right here, uh, we're going to do a custom cell. All right, so how do we do that? 
Uh, first thing we need to do is let's change this from subtitle to custom. Then we're going to be, need to go here and change the, uh, the uh, insp uh, identity inspector. We need to change this to be some subclass of UI table view cell because obviously we're going to have some labels and stuff in here that we need to have outlets to. Okay, so let's go up here, new file. Okay, Cocoa Touch class. This time, instead of UI table view controller, it's going to be UI table view cell subclass, and we'll call this a tweet table view cell because that's what it is. It shows a tweet. Okay, click that. Put it in the same place we put everything. Here we go. There's our table view cell. We'll look at that in a second. In our storyboard, we're going to change the custom class here to be tweet table view cell. Okay. And here's our tweet table view cell. Uh, we don't need a wake from nib. You all remember what that is. We don't need it. Uh, here's an interesting one right here. Uh, this will get called in the table view cell if the table view gets selected. I showed you how you can find out in the controller. Here you can actually find out in the table view cell. But we don't need either of those things. Okay, we're not going to do either of those things. Uh, what we really need is just to build our UI. So let's go back to our storyboard uh, and build the UI that we want in here. So what kind of stuff do we need uh, for a tweet? Well, let's see. We probably need something which is uh, the tweet's text. Okay, the tweet's text, by the way, is long, and I want it to wrap into multiple lines. So I'm actually going to go to the inspector up here and make the number of lines in this text label be zero. Zero means keep wrapping. Okay, don't try to fit it all in one line with dot, dot, dot. Remember how our display would always say dot, dot, dot? Zero means keep wrapping around, so we definitely want that. Um, we also want the tweeter, so let's have one for the tweeter. Okay. And that we do want to be on one line. Uh, let's show when the tweet was created, maybe. Uh, and how about let's put an image in there. Let's put, uh, where's our UI image view? Here it is. Put a UI image view out here. Um, we'll have this be uh, the profile image, basically, of the user. Now, some things here we got to do to arrange this. And I'm going to try and keep this mostly in what you already know. Um, one thing is the fonts. Okay, these things are very different from like a button in terms of fonts. These are user data. This is what the user is looking at. So we need to not use system font here. We need to pick a different font, which is one of the textiles. Remember, I mentioned the textiles. So tweeter is kind of like a headline. It goes at the top. Tweet text is probably like the body. That's the main. Oops, that's the main. Uh, body of, the, of what's showing here. Created is, is kind of like a caption, it's just a little thing on the side. So we'll say caption one. And we might play with these various things to find out what you know, is the best uh, font that we want in each circumstance. So that's the, one thing is a font. Next thing is we need to arrange them in stack views, obviously. We love stack views, so let's do that. Let's go here and embed these two in a stack view, how about? Um, we'll have them both be fill there. Uh, let's put these two in a stack view. Stack view. Um, also, we'll fill in both directions there. So we got those. Um, let's put these in a stack view. You can see a stack view, very powerful. Uh, let's put a little spacing between there, like that. Um, one thing that's not really very nice about this, OK, we probably want this to be fill also. One thing that's not very nice about this is um, look at this space right here. Look how it's giving so much space to the tweeter and not very much space to the tweet text. Okay? Well, it turns out there's a way in auto layout to control that, which is you can go to something that you want to hug to its contents, right? You want to kind of be as small as possible with content. You can select it, go over to the size inspector over here, which is where all the constraints are right here, and change its content hugging priority. See content hugging priority? I'm going to make its content hugging priority in the vertical direction to be high, higher than the other one. Okay? And when I did that, look what happened. It hugged. Okay? And now made this one be the big one. Because this one's content hugging priority is 251. This one's 300. So it's more of a priority to hug. You got it? That's the only kind of special trick I'm going to show you today. I'm going to do a whole lecture on auto layout next week. Um, all right, so we got this. So now let's do our thing where we hook it up to the edges, leading edge, up to the top, down here to the bottom, and over here to the trailing. Let's go ahead and 
click on these and see if we can make standard. No, so make this zero. See if we can make this one a standard. Nope, make this one also zero. See if we can make this one a standard. Nope, make this one zero. And the top one is probably already zero. Let's go ahead and look at it in our specter here. Yeah, look, top is already zero. So zero. Now, this is also not looking like I want. Okay, the image view is dominating. Okay, this is just the image view of the guy who tweeted it. Okay, so that wants to be small and in the corner. So I'm actually going to fix the size of this. So if you control drag to itself, you can set a constraint that constrains itself. So it's control drag to itself. So I'm going to fix its height and width. Okay, so that has fixed its height and width to this. Of course, I don't want it to be this big. I want it to be like, you know, 60 by 60, let's say. So I'm going over here to the inspector, the size inspector on this thing, and I'm going to change this constraint right here just by clicking edit. I'm going to change it to 60, and I'm going to change the height to also be 60. Okay? Now we have a much more re reasonable layout here, right? The text is using most of the space. The tweeter just at the top. We've got the little image for the tweeter up there, and we've got this created in here. We're good? Okay, now let's go and create outlets to all these things. So let's make more space here. Now, one thing to be careful of, if I go to, uh, man, to automatic here, and I try to make an outlet, look at the class it puts here, <clears throat> the table view controller. We know we cannot hook these outlets up to the table view controller because they have to be different for every cell. So instead, we have to go to manual up here, okay, and go not in Twitter, we need to go, actually, well, let's go here. <laughs> How do we get to there? Uh, mm, let's see, manual tweet table view cell, here it is. Okay, so let's go here. So here's our, our tweet table view cell right here, but this is not quite right either. Uh, hold on a second here. Manual, schematic, mobile objects. Huh, okay, it's showing me the interface here for some reason. Let's. Do something different here. Let's go over here. Okay, I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay, strange. Uh, let's do no tweet table view cell. Hmm. Okay, sorry about that. For some reason, you see it's fixed. It's showing me the interface for this. Uh, not sure exactly why. Okay, let's try this. Let's go here, and then over here. Uh, Counterpoints or something. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna quit. Ex <laughs> quit this thing and relaunch. Oh, by the way, when you go back in, be careful not to go back in with your Xcode project. You've got to go back in with your workspace, right? All right, now let's see. All right, we got our storyboard. <coughs> Manual, so that's no good either. Hmm. Like this. All right, no. Uh, this, and this. Okay, hmm, how about we back up now? Wow, weird. Um, hmm, I guess maybe we can do this. There we go. Okay, so we are going to, I'll make this wider too, so, um, we're going to hook up our outlets, okay, from here to here. So we do that with control drag, just as we normally would. So here we'll control drag this. I'm gonna call this one the uh, tweet screen name label, okay, because it's showing the screen name of the user. Uh, we'll do this in here. This is, we'll call the tweet text label. Uh, we'll do here, this is the Tweet created label, and we'll do this one. This is the tweet 
profile image view. Okay, and that's a UI image view. Okay, so I've got these nice outlets right here. And let's go back to here. Look at our text here. All right, so we've got these nice outlets. So now we need to be able to load these outlets up. When this cell, okay, comes on screen and we do cell for row at index path, we have to be able to tell this cell, here's the tweet, okay, so that you can load up all this information about the tweet. So I'm going to have a public var here called tweet, which is the tweet, and it's a twitter.tweet. Okay, and when you set that, I'm going to update my UI to set all of these things. So I'm going to have some private func update UI here. Okay, make sense? Now this is complaining about twitter.tweet because I have to import Twitter. Don't forget, import Twitter. Now, otherwise you're not going to see the, the classes from that in this uh, Swift, mod, Swift file. Okay, so we have this update UI right here. In the interest of time, uh, I'm going to type this uh, really fast. Okay, there it is. Okay, uh, you can look at this at your leisure uh, offline. But basically what it's doing, it's first is just clearing out all the outlets. Okay, then it's one by one going through and setting each of them based on the tweet. Okay, tweet that we have. Um, Notice, by the way, here, kind of fun thing, in the tweet's text, I add cameras, a bunch of cameras at the end, if the tweet has an image attached. Okay, that's what this little thing is here. I'm just going looking at all the images that this tweet has. That's this media array. And for each one, I'm adding a little camera there just to let us know there's an image. Okay, that's being added to the text at the end of the text. All right, then here's the created date in a nice little format. Uh, here's the image view if it exists, all right? UI image. Notice this blocks the main thread. Fix this in your homework because one of your required tasks is you cannot block the main thread. So even though I'm not doing the dispatch here, you need to. Got it? All right. So that's our tweet label. So now to make this work, we just need to set this tweet var in our self row at index path. Okay, so here's our self row at index path. Right now it's doing all this business right here. We don't want that. Okay. Instead, we're just going to say if we can let a tweet cell equal the cell as one of our tweet table view cells, okay, which it should be because all these tw the tweet prototype in our storyboard over here, okay, that's this is that this is the tweet prototype cell right here. If we look at it type, um, it is. If I can select it, here's where I'm going to use Control Shift. Okay, Control Shift lets me pick which what I want, which is the table view cell. You can see that it's a custom type, right? So this should be good right here. So if I can get this cell as that, then I'm just going to set the cell's tweet equal to the tweet at that row and in index path. Okay? Uh, all right, tweet cell. Okay. Got it? So that's it. It's not that hard to do this custom UI. Let's go take a look, make sure it's working. All right, here it is. So, well, this looks somewhat better, I guess. It's really not much better. Because one thing is, look at the heights of the rows. They're all the same. Even if it's a short little one like this, it gets all this yucky white space, this extra white space, compared to a long one, right? So that's bad, and, and big ones are not even fitting, okay? Also, where's my profile image view? Got a couple of problems here. So let's talk about the height first, what's going on with the height. And remember I said you can have the height be dynamic and automatically calculated from the tweet by just setting the height to automatic dimension. And the place to do that is in your view did load. Okay, so here's my view did load. And I'm just going to set in here my table views row height equal to this UI table view automatic dimension thing. Okay. But now what about the estimated height? I need to give it an estimated height. So I'm actually going to set the table view's estimated row height equal to the row height that came out of the storyboard. Okay? So this is the row height I'm getting now. Same on every one. I'm going to make that one just be the estimated one. And then I'm going to set the row height to be this automatic. And that's going to recalculate it all the time. How about the fact that I'm not getting those profile image views? Look, I got something in my console right here. You recognize this? App transport security. Okay, you all remember that from last time? So let's fix that. We go into our info.plist. 
We're going to add a row here. It's going to be the app transport security row right there. We're going to go down here and add arbitrary loads, okay? And we're going to set it to yes. So we're going to allow arbitrary uh, URLs. Okay? Make sense? Take this down out of there. Okay, let's run again. And hopefully things will look really nice. Okay, that does look quite a bit better, okay? This is starting to look like some, I don't know if we could post it on the uh, App Store quite yet, okay, but it's getting there, okay? Um, so I wanted to ask one more thing, which is I want to put a search thing at the top here so we can search, okay, for not just always be hashtag Stanford, as much as we love hash, hashtag Stanford. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to our storyboard. One thing is I'm going to put it inside of a navigation controller here. I'm going to embed this whole thing inside a navigation controller. That means I can have a nice title on it, right? Remember I set the title to be what I searched for, so I'm going to have that there. Uh, then I'm also going to go and drag out a text field to be my search. So this is going to be the editable kind of text field, which is right here. And if you drag right up at the top, you have to be a little careful. It has to look like this. You see where it stretches out? You can set the table views header. So I've set this text field as the table views header. Okay? And I probably want to change some things about it, maybe a little bit bigger font. Maybe I want to use the placeholder here like uh, Twitter search text or something like that. That's a, just a little something that tells people what this field is. Okay, that's just going to always be in the background until they start typing or whatever. And I'm going to need to have an outlet to it. So let's do that. Okay, this time I do want automatic. Okay, because this is not in a cell. This is at the top. All right, so let's control drag down here. Let's put this, um, I don't know, down at the bottom here. Let's control drag out here and call this search text field. All right. When the search text field is set, we're going to set its delegate to be ourself. We know that with text fields, we want our delegate. We're also going to set the search text field's text equal to our own search text. OK? Everybody understand that? Let's go back here and so we can see a little better. Uh, OK, it's complaining about self. It doesn't like self because we are not a UI text field delegate, so we better set ourselves to be that. All right, what else we got down here? Oh, they did set, yeah, thanks. Did set. There we go. OK, so when the search text field uh, is set, we're going to do this. And then, of course, we're going to implement that uh, method, the text field method, which is the text field, the text field should return. Okay, and in here we're just going to have the text field resign first responder. Okay, and then we're going to return true. And let's um, also have the text, let's grab our search text out of there. Search text equals the text field's text. Okay, so when someone hits the return key, uh, we're going to grab the text out of there and hide the keyboard. Okay, make sense? All right, I believe that's all we need to do. Let's get our Stanford out of there. Where's Stanford? Here it is. No more Stanford. Let's run. Okay, so we got our search text up there. So let's try, let's put Stanford back in there, see if that works. There it is, that's good. Let's try something else like NBA. Okay, there's the NBA. Okay, working good. Go back to Stanford again. Let's do that again. Okay, there you go. All right, CS13P mentioned right there. How about that? Okay, so that's it. Now, uh, I have a couple more things I wanted to show, but we ran out of time, so I'm going to post them in this code. I'll be co posting this code. I'll add a couple of things. The two things I want to do is, one is uh, I want to be able to pull down on this table view and show more tweets. Okay, so the table view, the way to kind of update it is you pull down on it and a little spinner comes up there and it's going to show more. Okay, so I'll, I'll uh, put that, I'll basically add that code uh, into what I'm going to uh, uh, post. That, that's all I'll show. Okay, that's it. Sorry to run long. See you next time. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.